All right, let's keep this thing moving. We just uh, covered Chris Thompson. We're going to skip down the ADP and cut to his counterpart, Samaj P. Ryan, down at 144. If you listened to us last offseason, we went pretty, pretty hard in the paint for P. Ryan. We uh, had a had a love fest. I don't know if we still, quote, love him. He, he kind of let us down, or as Casey put it off air, the organization let kind of let us down with their usage. And, and uh, if you read the Roto World blurbs now, they're all back and forth about whether they're He's going to take over the starting role or he's going to – they got to definitely improve. And, and at the running back spot, it's it's back and forth. They definitely – you know, Roto World has hate in their heart. They let it out as often as they can. Um, I really would rather them not give us their opinion. But uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's get into some P. Ryan here at 144. I'll double down. I'll take P. Ryan at 144. What, what do you guys think? Well, 144 is not doubling down. 144 is like – Yes, please. Why not? At 144, what do you have to lose? I mean, obviously, there's a Giovanni Bernard right there who gets no respect, and there's an old, washed-up DeMarco Murray right there. I mean, what, why wouldn't you take Samaj P. Ryan, who really showed you a lot in a couple of games last year? And just before I turn this over to Casey in his analytical eyes, like, you don't say we're definitely upgrading the running back position if you're – definitely running upgrading the running back position mm-hmm. like it's everything about pre-draft is all about you know smoke screens smoke screens right so if you're definitely where there's smoke there's fire if you're definitely upgrading the running back position that's when you're hammering you're hey we're looking at cornerbacks and defensive back and, and deep at dns i mean come on now. why are you gonna go disrespect your man like that nobody's doing that nobody's it's doing a little that. disrespectful towards p ryan yeah, well, I mean, I think that's a, what that organization does. They just disrespect their players. Yeah, I don't give a shit about yeah, it. no it's doubt, a, bad it's organization. It's a terribly run organization. Terrible. It has been a long for a long time. They, they 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 don't know what they got when they got it. They can't ever figure things out. They paid Kirk Cousins way too much money. They could have kept him around. Yeah. and paid him probably less money if they would have just paid him originally. Right, like they, they they just don't know what's going on. They always keep the wrong guys. They just can't seem to figure it out. And then as far as P Ryan goes, I mean. When you look at him from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, I think you saw a nice growth from from a player. Absolutely. I thought you saw a guy in the beginning of the season who wasn't running like you saw him run in college. He was, he was pressing. pressing. Yeah, he was Jeez. pressing really hard. And when, you know, obviously when there's nothing there, I like to see my running back, especially a guy that his stature, put their head down and try to get what you can get. With that being said, like I, I don't think he was having enough patience in the beginning of the season. And when you watch him from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, I st- thought he started to show some patience and started to get back to kind of get comfortable. And he had some fumbling problems and he confidence. Fumbled, he dropped an easy pass, one of his only two drops on the year. I, I can remember it like it was yesterday. It was like wide open, going to convert the third down, and he just blew it. He battled. And he, got, he put himself in the coach's doghouse by, by messing up a couple times, got his confidence down. And it just it started to snowball effect in the in the wrong way. But he's a trooper. He's a battler. He battled himself back to a prominent position. And in midway through the season, or week eleven and twelve, he start he had over twenty carries in each game. Right. Well, I mean, they didn't have a choice. Rob Kelly got injured. And Chris Thompson got Chris hurt. Chris Thompson got hurt. So, so they had so to find a feature. They had to feed P. Ryan. And what did he do? He I I think he he played fairly well, especially on a team who you know wasn't very hopeful of of doing much and the offense in general when you watch the team especially later on in the season as the defense got hurt and as the offensive linemen started to dwindle down Trent uh Williams Trent Williams was hurt all season Morgan Moses was battling injuries all season this this line was banged up um obviously you don't have too many threats on the offensive side as far as weapons prior got injured Crowder battled injuries a good bit of the season. P. Ryan battled injuries, a hand injury, and a multitude of other things. Reed was nowhere to be throughout. seen. Yeah, Reed's nowhere to be seen. So lots of things. And then when you watch this offense on tape, it's like it's a bunch of big, heavy sets with one wide receiver out here, and they got everybody in the middle of the field. There's one deep, there's one safety playing, you know, kind of center field back there, and then everybody else is is up near the line of scrimmage. Like it just wasn't that great. When you look at the next gen stats and you look at eight eight plus uh defenders in the box p Ryan's fairly high up there now i don't it doesn't clarify whether that's and i don't have the time to go through and count whether it was eight defenders and eight offenders which a lot of the times i think that was the case is that they had a lot of bigger heavier guys in there so there's a lot of traffic and whatnot yeah, you'll get but, eight in the box if you got a big heavy package right so but still i think p Ryan did face 
you know, a little bit of an uphill battle when he was doing what he was doing. But then at the end of the season, you saw a little bit of increase of him kind of waiting for that zone kind of read action on the offensive line develop and showed patience and, and hugged up to the line and burst through holes. And he's a pretty hard guy to bring down once he's, running extremely with, hard. once he's running with confidence. And these people who say that P. Ryan can't catch, like he ends the season with three for four targets, three for three, four for four, two for two, and three for three, doesn't really play in week 17, ends up with a decent amount of catches. And, and looked and, great doing it. And he it. looked fantastic doing so. It was like a one-handed catch in there, too. And he's, t- like like I said, I mean, it wasn't like he was just getting hit when he caught the ball. If there was somebody near him, he was catching balls in stride and running running right, right through arm tackles. I, I thought you saw some some good growth. Now, when you look at the, the averages on the yards per carry in, in some of those games. Oh, well, it's yards per carry. They're not fantastic, but there's also in this Dallas game, they get down early. They have a lot of turnovers. They're down trying to come back. So he has some good runs. And when you watch the game and then you go back and look at the box score, you're like, well, this doesn't make sense. I just saw him make a bunch of good runs. But then when you look at the the, the overall end game and you look at where the runs went, it's like positive run, positive run, positive run, eight three, four, one, eight, you know, and then it's minus three, minus three, minus one, no gain, no gain, no gain. And it's like some of those aren't really his fault. There's guys in the backfield. He doesn't really have anywhere to go. And then in the in the charger game, again, they get down early and they're trailing the whole game, you know, so it's 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 but still what, what then when you look at the fantasy production, he comes back with those catches and in from week 11 on he has 16 points from week 12 on week 12. He has or in, in week 11. Sorry, he has 19 points in week 12. He has 16 points week 13. He has 9.9, which is I'm going to count that as another double digit game for you. <laughs> three in a row. So that's three in a row. Wow. And then he finishes with 9.2, 8.6 and 9.4. And in week 17, not a ton of usage. So, I, I mean, carries. on a struggling team, on a struggling offense, I thought he played, and, and a defense that was just beat up with injuries, I thought he played pretty well to end the season. And you started to see the reason why you did like you, Samaj P. Ryan at the end of the season. And, you know, so at 144, I'm, I'm, I'm not that upset with snagging him and put him on my team. Obviously, if they... No, that's the last pick in the 12th round. You could do a lot worse than grabbing Piran. A, a potential starting running back, and obviously, maybe they draft some... Maybe they do upgrade and draft somebody it, it, later in the draft, or maybe they bring in another free agent, and, and we kind of see how that, that plays out, but I thought you saw some some positive things from him. I thought he can kind of can do a little bit of everything for your team. Like, he can be your first and second down guy, and then, on, like, he caught balls perfectly fine. When they threw it to him, yeah, two drops. That's a that's player profiler. Not that's inflated drops there too. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, and, and well, real quick to the point of uh, if they bring in another running back, then his ADP is going to drop even more, and he's going to be even cheaper. Yeah, very which true. I'm all in because he, I, I'm not going to blame them when they bring in another running back. They got freaking Rob Kelly and Chris Thompson who can never finish a season. So I'm not. I wouldn't be mad at him if they brought in another running back. Maybe if they spent like a high pick on one, but I, yeah. I don't think that's going to be the case. I'd still be down on Piron because I think he's going to win this battle. I think he's going to win this job, and he's going to produce because he's got his confidence back. He's got his his swagger back. He he started to look like the dude you saw in college, and he, he'll run you over. And then he shows you some PPR floor. Like yeah. let me get some Piron. Why do you hate? Why are yeah. you hating? Uh, the biggest thing about that is the way that he looked decent catching those balls. It gives you a potential for like people say they just pigeonhole somebody and says this guy's big, he's strong, so he definitely can't catch. Yeah, and and, and you know he didn't have a lot of college production in that standpoint, but you gotta you gotta see when he did have the, given the chance, give, given the chance, he like. looked pretty decent. We well, said that last. In year. a quick Google search here, it looks like the Redskins don't have a third round pick. They got too many holes to be worried about the running back in the first two rounds, and there's a lot of de- there is a lot of strong, solid running back depth in the draft class here. So for in sure. the fourth and the fifth round, they definitely could grab somebody good. But in the fourth and the fifth round, I, I I don't unless some some decent running back slide down the board there. I just don't see where you're going to get somebody who comes in automatically and bumps P Ryan out of the spot to to get mm-hmm. a shot. And like you said, Jay Wayne, when he had his confidence going, it you know a fumble can hurt you sure, but when he had his confidence going, he looked good. And Battering ram man, when, he always he was like spinning forward, getting five more yards as he was getting tackled. No, no doubt. And oh. those the week eleven game, like twenty three carries, one hundred and seventeen yards on the road against the Saints, which they had surprisingly one of the best mm. defenses in the league this Preach. year in a touchdown. And playing at home the very next week, you got a rookie that just carried the ball 23 times, comes back the next week, carries it 24 times, gets 100 yards, catches three for 30, 30 like 
Casey said. And the next week, the Dallas game on the road is when they just fell apart with their turnovers, and the offensive line had two or three injuries in like four different plays. Yeah, it was like bang, like the the game came to a stop for like forty five minutes because there was two huge men laying on the field that couldn't move within three plays of each other. And he gets there's no no nothing there for the rock to run the rock, but he grabs three for thirty in the passing game, like you said. So like this dude is not just a one and two down back bruiser. Is he going to come in there and be Le'Veon Bell? Absolutely not. But you at twelve doesn't have to 12, come out on third at, down at twelve twelve and the potential to drop down like it, like you just, it's you I think that was perfect if what a you guy said. Grabs a, it doesn't matter who they take in the draft, right? Because if they grab a if running they take back, any running back, the haters will be out. Any running back sounds better than Piran. Yeah, they're already out. I mean. If you have hate in your heart, let it out. Sure. He's, he's a plotter. He's not any good. I told you so. Oh, I liked him, but now I'm off of him. I I, I liked what I saw at the end of the season. And this is this is what fantasy football is all about, man. You, you, everyone's down on this guy. I, I, I'm, I'm going to double down on him, and I'm, I'm going to reinvest and, and, and see what, what comes out. It's not going to really cost me or hurt me at all. So mm. I'm going to – Yeah. I'm, I'm hanging out with P. Ron. I, I believe in his ability. Yeah. The biggest thing this year is, is to – don't let the liberal media tell you <laughs> how to think and feel. So when the Redskins draft a running back, which they very well could do with a later round pick, don't listen to all the hate that's definitely about to come out. Just be glad that P. Ryan's ADP is going to drop even more and be all in. Let's just kiss some P. Ryan. Well, well, one more thing, like on, on some of these negative runs that he had, it should have been way worse than it was, and he fought just to get zero or negative one on, on right. some of these negative gains. He's a really tough guy to bring down. He's a hard-nosed runner. I like everything that P. Ryan the ricochet has to offer. romance. <laughs> sure. Oh my God, King! <laughs> <It's a> ricochet <laughs> romance. 